Hello and welcome to this video on how to manage your data files from iRacing in AIM Race Studio Analysis software. Now typically when you download data normally from an AIM Solo or from a Dash, you have the opportunity of being able to set up certain parameters for your session. You can say whether it's a race or practice or qualifying, you can nominate the driver, you can add notes. But when you bring data in from iRacing, it always comes in in the same format with um, certain key information such as uh, the driver, uh, the date, uh, the vehicle, and the track. But there's not enough information here if you want to be able to start identifying more information from this particular file. So what I've been doing is uh, taking this file, right click on it, and changing the test properties, which you can do here. Now I can go in and start changing certain parameters here, which will allow it be easier for me to be able to understand this session. So I can go in here and change this to Brands Hatch Indie, which I created. If you wonder how to be able to create that track, you just go to Add Modify. You can add here Brands Hatch, and you can say something like um, Long Course, and you can add value to the database, and click on OK, and now it's there. I don't want to use that. I want to use the Indie circuit, so that's where I was. Um, it'll say Championship. Now, I want to be able to separate out my iRacing files from my um, normal racing files, and so um, I'm going to put in here a parameter called iRacing, and I can put in additional information here, such as was it a race or practice. So this one just happened to be generic testing, but you can put in anything else. I could say, for example, this is a test uh, for this video series that we're looking at. In addition, because iRacing is so good at being able to give you flexibility and options in being able to change setup and change parameters and understand track conditions, I also like to add certain notes in here as well. So I can specify that uh, you know this was a session which the uh, ambient temperature was 68 degrees Fahrenheit, um, uh, we could nominate certain additional information in here, such as it was 25% track conditions, um, uh, it was baseline setup, and uh, and it was morning, um, around, uh, I think it was uh, morning time, or early morning, I think they called it. So what this allows me to do is to be able to measure these, because as we know, the more we change the parameters of the track conditions, or we change the weather variables, it changes the performance uh, on track and it's good to be able to have that as a reference point. Now what we can do is click on OK and now we've got all that additional information that's in here that we can actually work with. Once we open up that file, the other thing that's going to happen, and we reference this in the import, is that just like if you're downloading data from an AIM Solo or from a Dash uh, and you've done a partial lap, you will see sometimes lap times that don't make any sense. In this one, for example, a 4.7 second lap doesn't necessarily relate. This is obviously due to the fact in iRacing we can escape whenever we want to to be able to go back to the garage to be able to adjust what we need to. And so we want to be able to manage those laps um, in the system. So uh, best thing to do is to go into Lap Manager and start looking at the laps that were done. So I did here 12 laps um, to be able to uh, use this for a demonstration purpose uh, with this um, MX-5. And so you'll notice that there's a 13 second lap and a 4.7 second lap and obviously the the uh, starting out lap times as well. And so just like any management of a session, you want to be able to um, change that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to nominate a, um, a fast lap. That's just so I can uh, go down here and I can disable this lap. You can never disable the reference lap until you, you select another lap. It's just a feature uh, within the AIM Race Studio Analysis software. I also want to be able to disable this lap as well uh, and arguably the first lap uh, and looks like I probably went off track in this lap. You can keep it if need be, or you can disable it. But then you get a true reflection of the laps that are there. And because one of the advantages of working within the software is that you can um, work through different um, variables just like you would do with a normal race file, uh, this will help with things like the split times analysis. This will make sure there's no errant data in there to be able to show um, unusual graphs in the measures graph. So if I now go to the measures graph, um, and uh, I go into areas such as laps. Um, I can pick two laps. This was a 54.8. Let's see if we got a, uh, there's a 55.0. That's pretty close. Uh, go in and change the parameters, red and blue. And just like we would do with normal analysis, now we have all of that information available to us to be able to analyze just like we would do normally. Now you may be wondering how I've set up all the channels here, and I'm going to create a separate video on that later on in this series, so look out for that, that talks about how to be able to make sure that you can make sense of the fact that when you get data from iRacing, you get an awful lot of measures and channels. And for many of you who may be used to just four or five coming in from a GPS device, 
this can be quite uh, overwhelming. So we'll talk about manage, measuring uh, the measures graph and being able to work through those channels in a later video. So hope you found this useful, um, being able to manage and, and, and work through the iRacing data. Please leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos and um, look out for the next one where we'll talk more about managing uh, those measures.